This is a tutorial on image stacking in GIMP, where you can take multiple photographs mounted on a tripod of the same subject and mix them together in a way that greatly reduces noise and increases visible detail in your images. If you don't already have GIMP, go get it. You can get it at GIMP.org. You also need a plugin called GMIC QT. I think the website for that is gmic.eu. I don't remember exactly, but you'll need the GIMP plugin version of GMIC QT before we continue. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do here is if you install GIMP, it will start with these floating toolboxes. I personally really don't like them. Most people don't seem to like them. So what you should do is go to Windows and hit Single Window Mode which converts it into a much more useful single window program just like Photoshop or any other image editor that you may already be used to. Um, obviously if you're using GIMP it's uh, either because you don't want to pay for Photoshop or you want to learn an open source alternative. So we're going to take a picture that I took on a Panasonic G7 uh, with uh, F4 half a second exposure ISO 25600. What does that mean? It means noise. Lots and lots and lots and lots of noise. I actually took this on a tripod along with approximately 13 other pictures um, of the exact same tree and moon behind clouds and I want to show you look at those trees at the bottom you can't see any detail in those branches at all so what we're gonna do is we're going to magically make this picture have a lot more detail on those tree branches and just in general the noise will go down significantly the first step is going to be to pull all the other pictures in as layers so we have the first picture that I've already opened up we're going to pull the remainder of the pictures in as new layers let me get this window resized so you can see it a little better so you can drag all the files they can all be dragged and dropped in the layers here and it will open them individually as layers for you now we have our layers opened there are several of them and you'll notice if I peel back the layers there's not really much of a difference between them even if I go in and zoom one to one you'll notice that some of the tiny branches may move a little or appear to do so because of the noise at ISO 25600 the noise is very bad 25600 is a lot of gain. Anyone who's tried to take pictures at very high ISO knows this. But this noise is going to go away. So now that we've got our layers loaded, go to Filters, go to GMIC Qt or QT. I really don't know exactly how I feel like saying it. This is GMIC. It's this really cool, all kinds of crazy filters and modifiers that you can do. It's, it's this neat plugin. Adds a lot of functions to GIMP that you may be used to in other image editors. The one we want is under layers and it's called Blend Median. You can actually see the results of it here. But before we do the blend, go to Align Layers. I like to make the alignment type non-rigid and lower the smoothness a bit. Maybe about half and just hit apply the uh, plugin will attempt to get your layers lined up properly so that the branches in one layer match the branches in another and so on then go to blend median and you can already see the effect there but we're going to hit OK and let it do all the work the defaults are sensible you should not need to change them but huh what happened there Oh, that was interesting. Well, I guess one of the flaws with this method is that it has to be able to allocate enough memory to 
do a median of 18 layers. So that's uh, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, so if you run into this out of memory error that I have not seen every other time I've done this, um, and I'm not sure why I'm seeing it, let's see. Turn off some of your layers. It won't be quite as accurate, but believe it or not, you can do this by cutting some layers down and then dropping the ones that you've already done a median on and repeating the process. Uh, okay, let's see what happens if we use less pictures. Okay, it worked that time. And just to just to be nice and complete here we'll peel back some of these pictures now the beauty of median is that the way it works is different from averaging the frames together which is normally what you would think of using this median function it selects the color value that is roughly in the middle of all of the options so you get about the same results regardless of how you plug everything in you can take three layers and do a median then you can take three other layers and do a median and three others and do a median and then do a median of those three and you'll probably get about the same results it, it won't be a hundred percent the same but it'll be close so let's just see what we've done here this is our final merge of those two sets of layers that wouldn't go because of that memory error. Um, this is the first one and this is an individual layer. So this is what you started with or this and this is what you end up with. Let's go down to the trees where you have no visible detail. Okay, these trees look terrible but now you can see where the individual branches are. Not the smallest ones, but some of the larger branches, the detail is apparent. Let me click it back again. And now that you've seen it with the detail, you can see that it's still kind of there, even without it. But you have to admit this looks a lot better than this. Just all across the board, the picture looks better. But you can do this with a lot of different situations, a lot of different cameras. It works the same way in any case. Let's take another one that's not quite so egregious. Uh, let's take this, actually. This is something I really wanted to show you. I have a Canon camera. Um not the kind you may be thinking of. I have a Canon camcorder and it's got the smallest sensor ever. It's actually smaller than most remotely decent phone cameras. So this is a frame from that camcorder. It's a 1080p frame. And it looks like this. Um, you can see red noise everywhere. It is very bad. This is the low light mode of the camcorder and it basically is half second shutter. I went through and manually captured all of the frames to image files. And I'll pull those frames in for you now. All right, filters, GMIC. Now the first thing I want to do is align just to be sure that nothing is off center. Then I'm going to blend median, okay, and hope we don't get a memory error again. And we didn't. And there's your result. Now, you wouldn't guess that this has a, this, that this came from a camera that has a sensor smaller than a cell phone's. But that is the case. There's a one-to-one -one shot. You can see lots of detail on the branches. Let's go down to the trees. The trees aren't so great, but look at the original, just one frame of that video. The noise is horrible. I think the difference is pretty clear. 
You can do this with almost any camera that you have, assuming that you can get a tripod or other extremely stable mount that will make it take exactly the same picture every time. And the camera, well, it really needs to either have manual focus or hit autofocus in low light somehow really, really well. It would have to be pretty consistent. And a lot of times they're not consistent. Let me show you one more. I have a Canon PowerShot A3400IS. And this is a picture. Um, I use CHDK firmware which is a firmware modification. Um, this is actually developed in UF RAW from a DNG RAW file from that point and shoot camera. So I'm going to pull in all of the other developed RAW files, they're JPEGs now, and we're going to stack them. Because this is a point and shoot in the dark, the focus is pretty bad. It does not do a good job of focusing in the dark. So you may want to zoom in on a detailed area. Um, by the way, these are long exposures, I believe four seconds. Um, zoom in on a detailed area and look and see if things move. See that moved, so that layer may not be the best one to have. So it looks like these top two layers are actually shifted a bit. That could have been anything. It could have been the tripod. It could have just been something with the camera. It could have been wind. I don't know. So we'll turn the visibility off for those two. And we'll go back in here to GMIC and let's use our align layers just to be safe and blend median now you see how it says all visible here for input that means that those two that we hid that we can't see anymore they will not be included in this median so i'll hit ok all right here you go. So let's look at this area around the moon first. This is the finished product. This is one of the raws. Um, obviously that's not one of the ones where the moon is visible. This is probably the closest. So let's compare with this one. Notice how even though there is still noise, um, it's hard to get rid of noise on a point and shoot like that. Even though there is still noise, there's a lot less of it. This is the original, and this is the stacked. Let's go down to the trees, where loss of detail is also apparent. And this is what happens when you stack it. The difference is quite clear. Now, I also want to show you, just while you're here, um, the difference between the RAWs on this camera and the actual JPEG output is kind of ridiculous. Let me pull in all the JPEGs that go with this sequence. Okay. I'm skipping the two that were not aligned properly. Um, I don't really want to mess up this process. So the JPEGs, it's already apparent there's less color. Actually, let me just pull a raw in as a layer to show you. There's the raw. There's the JPEG. It's a bit overexposed as a JPEG. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get rid of that and we'll stack these. All right, GMIC. Align layers, apply, blend, okay. Wait for it to process all the pictures together, okay. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this looks a lot muddier than the RAWs did. 
the thing is, if you want to keep detail, you can't use denoising algorithms on pictures. Unfortunately, most cameras have no control over that. The only way you can get control over the denoising that is done by the camera software is to shoot raw. So you see this raw? Okay, that's a JPEG. That's a few JPEGs. But because of the denoising that's done by the camera to try and make things look better, you have a loss of fine detail. And the problem is that median, if you took a lot of exposures, the median might bring that back to some extent. But once the detail is smoothed over by denoising, it's gone forever. Let's, uh, again, we can compare this to one of the raw files. It's shifted a bit, but you can see the quality difference just between a single raw file, the amount of detail. That, now, yes, you can see a lot more noise, but that's part of the reason you can see a lot more detail. You lose the noise through a denoiser, it smooths over all the detail. So look at these little branches here. You can see them here. It's a little hard to see right there because of the noise. But all this spider web of branches here gets lost. In fact, now that I'm looking at it, there's one here and here, here and here. You can't even see in this one. They're just practically gone. They've been smoothed over. So shooting raw, shooting with noise reduction turned down, which you can do at least on Panasonic G7s, possibly other Panasonics, being able to turn down the noise reduction helps a lot with picture quality. And if you're going to do this stacking stuff, then you can use the combination of shooting raw and stacking to get the most quality out of your final product. If your picture resolution is really high and the denoising is not very aggressive, you could probably get away with just shooting JPEG. Um, RAWs require extra processing before you actually use them. So um, it's your prerogative. Um, shoot whatever works for you. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. And thank you for watching. Have a good one.